liberal psychosis. Oh, mass formation psychosis. So, all right, you ready? I think we're experiencing it heavily with the the cult of the liberal establishment. There's something going on, that's for sure. So this uh, again, I'm so bad with names. This guy, this uh, Belgium, Belgium, Bel, what do you call him? Bel, he's from Belgium. He's a psychologist. Belgian. Belgian. There we go. Belgian psychologist. <laughs> Wasn't, it's too late at night. Wasn't Belgish, spitting it out. Yeah. Belgish. <laughs> Flemish. Yeah. Uh, he came up with this notion of the mass formation psychosis. The idea is if you have lots of free-floating anxiety, very limited social connections, and lack of meaning, that it's very easy for people to get sw swept into things, swept into movements, and most particularly into sort of tribal movements that include rituals like wearing a mask. And the more those rituals are disconnected from... Any evidentiary reality, the less masks are useful, the more they cling to them as a signal of their group participation. And if you're somebody who has been away from a group and really feels isolated, and now here's a way to stay connected and say, I'm a part of it. I wear that mask outside. You know, in more, the more ridiculous, the better to let you know I'm all into that group. And this becomes rather psychotic, right? It becomes histrionic, it becomes hysterical. I, I said at the very, uh, during Trump's, I guess probably two or three years into Trump's administration, I kept saying, there's something going on where people are becoming histrionic, they're becoming psychotic. If, if you had come to me six, seven years ago and said, you know, kept talking about Nazis and you're seeing Nazis everywhere and told me that there was a Russian operative in the, in the Oval Office, I would put you in the hospital. 5150? That is a psychotic symptom. And there are all, there is a free floating psychotic, and then the paranoia is on the other side, these paranoid conspiracy preoccupations. So there is definitely the circumstances that can set up a mass formation. There is definitely psychotic symptoms flying around. And back when I wrote a book about narcissism 15 years ago, I wanted to put a chapter in about what happens when narcissists get, narcissists get stressed and how they form mobs and then start using guillotines. I wanted to look yeah. at other. I wanted to look at other so other examples in history. Only thing I could find was the Aztecs and pre-revolutionary France, and France being the best example of how we treat kids. Very similar in pre-revolutionary France, how we traumatize kids, sexual sexual abuse, physical abuse, abandonment, neglect massive pa pandemic of that creates a lot of PTSD and narcissism and, and cluster B personality disorders and they tend to form mobs and act out their aggression uh, collectively like that from in, what with, a, scapegoating, with scapegoating. From, I wonder if Hitler was one of those too because he well, was that time, beat up in World War I. It wasn't just him. The whole country was beat up in World War I so there was this, this you know, trauma. This, yeah, and so the scapegoating became the Jews. I think uh, based on what I've seen, how people, re how I, th I think mass formation psychosis there, something something I, like that they may not be the exact uh, construct say, but it's a pretty good one i'm like there are people that i've known my whole life they've literally gone insane yeah and it, it there's no other explanation insane is exactly it like the things i see them posting online the things they've said to me i'm like you don't live in the real world anymore yeah they it's just it's, it's, like, it's, it's really strange it's, but it? you say like seeing nazis everywhere yeah. it's actually like what we actually see in the in 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 mainstream conversations, they still believe the Russia hoax. Yeah, there are still it's a it's a world that was crafted upon a a, a, a false reality, and maybe it's because of the media. Well, the, the media, media has been inflaming it for sure. Social media has been inflaming it. But, but but think think about this: someone today, their whole worldview is built upon six years of fake news. Yeah. Seven years, I know. starting with Trump's campaign, yeah. Russia hoax, and all that stuff. Yeah. And one by one, their worldview is built upon, how do you go back seven years to correct someone's shattered psyche? You can't. You, you get such powerful cognitive dissonance, and you, you can see it when they start attacking the person who, would, who exposes them to this. Right. The ad hominem arguments tells you the cognitive dissonance has been triggered. I think, I think part of it is that um, humans are scared to be wrong. For a variety of reasons. Well, we're wired this way. We are. Yeah. We are. What we are wired against is any change to our physical being. But it turns out the same uh, resistance to change of our physical being is wired into our self. The self can't be changed, and part of the self is our belief system. What I what I was I read this a long time ago, and and uh, I I don't know exactly what it was. It's been too long. But it's that you know our mind is developing until the array, uh, until about the age of twenty four. Is that is that right? Around there, 24 to 28 or something like that. I think that's true, but that is about true. Well, well men, men 27, 28, really. But that, that's yeah. like, and then you're an adult, and then yeah. your brain stops. Yeah. And uh, I was reading about why people have um, emotional breakdowns and panic attacks and things like that. 
And they said, humans evolved to defend their worldview. Mm. Because if you've made it to the age of 25, you've succeeded. Whatever it is you were doing, succeeded. You survived. You yeah. survived. Yeah. And this will keep you alive and your children. Mm -hmm. If this is wrong and it breaks, you are now at risk. Mm -hmm. So what happens is humans who would make dramatic changes at some point in their life would have a lower success rate and be more likely to die. Not not definitively, but it's just basic attrition. For, from an evolutionary perspective, you're right. saying. Yes. yes. Over a long enough period of time, those that were firm in their beliefs were more likely to survive. Correct. So if someone is, say, 35 years old and they've built their worldview and then you enter into logic that is indisputable and, and it breaks that, it puts them at risk of, uh, of not surviving. And thus they, they retreat to an emotional space of anger to try and reject what you've said because it will make them less likely to survive. And, and religion was always a big part of that. And people fought wars over these things. Yeah. And now the new religion is political. And so we are coming up, to, uh, coming up to seven years now of fake news hoaxes. Yeah. And there are people today who believed that story from seven years ago about Russia and the Alpha Bank and all that. They still believe it. They will not entertain reality. And there is no way for us to rewind the clock seven years to someone. I mean, seven years, every cell in your body, they say, has changed. Mm -hmm. Your whole being is built on a fictitious reality. I don't see how you solve that problem. Wait, seven years? Or your signature? Seven uh, more years of correcting it. We'd have to shut down. Uh, we have to. We have to. It's going to be longer than that. CNN's. You know, they're they're undergoing. Tra they're transforming dramatically. We have to gain a sphere of influence to the point where it's undeniable. Where what do you mean by that? Reality is undeniable. The who, Russian. Who, who needs a sphere? You need to have a sphere of influence. People. People who are not people, psychotic. People are connected to reality. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Concentric spheres. Yes. Yes. Need to can gain control over the like. And I don't mean any one person centralizing control. I'm saying the systems of influence need to be overwhelmingly run by those who are in objective reality. That is, the Russiagate stuff was a hoax. Trump wasn't a Russian agent. There's not Nazis everywhere. The, the, the total amount of white supremacists in the country, according to, I think, the ADL, I'm not sure, it's like 10,000 people, not several million like the media is lying about. Once these big networks like Vox, which claimed they said like millions of people were white supremacists or shared those views, it's insane. Once they lose influence and stop this, then these people who are experiencing mass formation psychosis might be forced out rather painfully, I might add, but it's the only way to get someone out of a cult. You have to remove them from the cult yes. and cut off their connection, but, but, sometimes but they it, have it. But, but oftentimes, but this is a really interesting point. I've not thought of it this way. If you, if you look at it through the prism of cult, there is often a, I forget what they call it, like when, when things rush in. When there's a sudden, fully, uh, uh, sort of a collapse of their cult views and a, and a rush in of reality, it's it's uncomfortable. It's painful. It takes them a while to adjust to it. But it's not a slow process. It's a fast process. I, I was listening to a podcast on the way in here about the, the JFK uh, sort of conspiracy theory. It was a guy who was a conspiracy theorist the, most of his young life, and then started actually reading the reports of what what you know what the evidence was one way or the other, and it all of a sudden just rushed in on him one day. And he had to change his whole outlook in one day. And that's very common with cultish kinds of views. So I, I, it may happen all at once to people, one at a time. Well, because of cell phones, these people can can always reconnect with the cult to reaffirm mm. their cult worldview. Yeah. And that's a scary reality. Yes.